Hey guys, this is KinoDVT here, and I'm bringing you a replay on Zelnaga Caverns between Shadow Wisp, the Red Zerg, and Evan Wins, the Blue Protoss. Now this is a ladder match, nothing particularly special about it. I would like to thank Mac Phoenix or Shadow Whips for providing me with this replay, and let's get right on with it. Now I will... I would like to know if you guys are interested in whether this is up or down. I think it's better to have it down, but then again, maybe not. Um, I think it's better to have down because then I don't spoil the time of the replay, but if you guys like knowing the time of the replay, just put a comment down below and I'll figure out what to do next. Now, both players being pretty much identical in pro production uh, slash drone production at the moment. Uh, Evan wins going for a pylon at 9 and Overlord uh, Shadow Wisp not Overlord, there we go. And this pylon is reasonably good placement. It'll allow him to place a gateway about here I'd suggest. Have a nice little choke to prevent Zerglings running into his base which is always a good idea when you're versing a Zerg. Especially on ladder when you're not exactly sure what they're gonna do. Now this map is um, it's an interesting map. I'm not the biggest fan of it. Um, me personally, I like uh, multiple base play, so I like maps that your natural, this, is slightly closer and slightly easier to defend. These one, two, three, four entrances make this a nightmare to hold if someone's trying to pressure you early. Now, Shadow Wisp is playing down a spawning pool at 14, very, very standard. Nothing particularly special. Uh, Evan wins laying down a gateway, 13, and a simulator at the same time. Probably going to put down either a cybercore or gateway as soon as this gateway finishes or minerals allow, depending on his playstyle. Um, on lower league ladder matches, a second gateway is more favoured than a. A cybernetic core. Sorry, just blanking on the terminology there. Now I'm not exactly sure how I feel about this early mineage, mineage of gas. It's a bit interesting. Uh, there goes the cyber core. So he's obviously going to try and leave us something from the cyber core, whether it be an early stalker or warp gate. Now he's just put a. He hasn't put hold position, which is interesting because one worker will be out of force that worker off into the nether regions. If you're trying to block a building, hold position is always the better idea. Now, as we can see, he's slipping behind in the income. Actually, they're about the same. Evan Wins has been able to keep ahead because of uh, uh, Shadow Wisps uh, having to use two, two Work, three workers to build buildings. It's a it's an interesting mechanic that, but uh, what would Starcraft be if all three races were the same, hey? We do see a queen popping up now and injecting lava straight away. A roach warren just popped up. Uh, Shadow Wisp possibly going to try and push out five or six roaches at the same time to see if we can do some kind of timing attack. We do see one stalker coming out for Evan Wins. However, he would be fairly vulnerable to a early roach push if if Shadow Wisp was inclined to do so. Now we do see a second gateway coming down for Evan Wins. Um, now two gateways is the sustainable level you can have if you want to go Robo or a Stargate. After that you need to just be three gate or two, three or four gate you can sustain off one base. One base pro so you can go two gateways, one Robo, two gateways, one Stargate, or four or three gateways. Three gateways is always preferred. Four gateways you have to favour zealots a bit more. Uh, Shadow Wish just poking up there trying to get some scouting information and if we pause we can see that he did actually get some quite decent scouting information. He saw a second gateway, a first gateway and a cyber course so that's some fairly good scouting information. Uh, considerably more than his opponent who only knows about a spawning pool. Now we do see the third gateway going down and nothing in production for Evan at the moment. That's not particularly good given the amount of minerals and gas he has. We do see him laying down a four gateway so we're going to see a four gate however we do see seven roaches heading out across the map which is going to be quite hard to deal with but again it's 
interesting because he's not producing anything. He can. Well, he's turning him into a bunch of warp gates, so we're going to see a couple of units being produced. However, he is supply blocked, which isn't a good place to be, especially with uh, this amount of roaches bearing down on your position. Seven roaches. Now, with this amount of stalkers, he will be able to hold it, and that sentry was perfect timing, basically. Now, if we see a force field getting thrown down now, we may see the force separated, but no, nothing seems to be happening. A good force field there might have been very useful. He would have been able to trap three roaches up here, three roaches down there, three roaches can't down there, can't do anything, and you get a few free roach kills. However, this placement of the um, stalkers allows him to have a nice arc over this uh, choke point, as it were, which will make... Uh, Shadow Wisp's life. Very, very difficult for pushing up there at the moment. Later on, I'm sure he'll be able to manage it, but at the moment, it'll be fairly slow. Difficult. Now, uh, Shadow Wisp is going for a ranged upgrade and faster roach movement. This will allow him to deal more damage against the high damage stalkers, who do get a bonus damage versus the roaches, however. Roaches still do have an inordinately large amount of HP. We do see a second hatchery going down as well as... yeah, that's about it. <sighs> it's hot, ladies and gentlemen. It is hot, hot, hot in Western Australia. It is currently 38 degrees Celsius. I have no idea what that is in Fahrenheit, but I've been told it's around 110-15. So, fun. Now, we do see uh, uh, Shadow Wisp now going for a second extractor, and that's quite interesting. I hadn't noticed that. You can now see Current Harvesters 3. That's kind of funky. As we can see, this guy has 4, which is not particularly good. This guy has 3 very well. That geyser. I should say geyser. Um, now, we can see two queens. One is going to be heading out to the natural expansion very quickly. However, quite a terrifying force heading out across the map. This could be quite interesting for Shadow Wisp to deal with. Production-wise, we can see one immortal coming up, but army-wise for Shadow Wisp, this could be quite interesting. He is going to have trouble dealing with this, especially with immortal backup, given he's gone pretty hard into roaches. Now, as I was saying earlier, to sustain off one base, you need two gates and a robo. So, I feel a bit iffy about this. You can push three gate, but they will be producing less. Optimally, you want to you want to have two gates and a robo. Now, having a third gate isn't necessarily bad because you can off off uh, often warp in excess units if you have excess minerals or at my level, possibly your level, I tend to find that after a fight I tend to have some excess minerals, so having an extra warp gate or two can help in dumping, but if you want to talk pure, I'm going to be producing all the time, then off one base, two gateways, one robo, we'll do it. <coughs> now, just going to continue playing here. Now, he could quite easily lead for an advantage, however, he waits, well, he's not even going to have to wait, this uh, one range upgrade will tip the battle into... I wonder what spooked him. Something spooked him because he just ran away. Uh, interesting. Maybe something on his internal clock when I should be expecting muters by now or something. But uh, he's turned tail and ran quite, uh, quite unexpectedly, really. I'm not exactly sure what's happening. Uh, this could get interesting. At the moment, we do see... Favouring Stalkers, which is always a good idea. Charged Lots are good against Roaches, in my opinion, but uh, Charge is quite a lot of tech to do. It can take away quite a large amount of gas for your army. It's rather annoying, actually. I'm not the biggest fan. I, I really like Charge, I just don't like how much it costs. We do now see this Watchtower being taken, and if Shadow Wisp was fast, he would have been able to catch a glimpse of this army as it moved in. However, this amount of roaches should do alright, given that they have one attack upgrade, which gives them 18 damage. However, we do see Evan Wins going for the rocks or the back door. Back door. Ooh. I'm not sure how much I like this, to be honest. So, he's going to come around down here, and this is just... This feels to me like you're just giving Shadow Wisp a choke point to hold. And given he has the larger army, it's just, it seems a bit stupid, 
really uh, I mean stupid's a strong word but it, it seems a little bit of a mistake to try and lever this back door given it's an even army fight you'll be fighting on creep it allows him to get a nice concave choke on you we can now see him levering the advantage of both his queen and spine collar those were quite excessive amount of force fields but it did get the job done by keeping some of those roaches out of position and this fight is tipping into Evan Windsor's favour. We can... that roach was like completely trapped, couldn't do anything. However, production-wise we do see 12 links coming in into play and 12... links will do quite well versus amount of uh, stalkers and immortals given that there are no zealots in there. Now, possibly if done well Evan Windsor could have pushed in there and won but he decided not to and pull back, which was the safer and more conservative option. Which, safe and conservative is... Um, it's it's what I prefer, because if you overextend on a push, then all they have to do is turn around and attack you, and then you die. And the amount of times I've died to that is uh, quite large. And if you're more cautious, you're almost always likely to have a higher win chance, because he could have pushed in there, and he might have been able to take that expansion, but he also might have lost a quite large percentage of what is left of his army, and then the Zerg could have pushed him. But he didn't. He ran back after getting an advantage and after getting an advantage and expanded, which is a really good thing to do. If you have the advantage, just run back and expand. Now, uh, I'm just going to call him Wisp. Wisp is pushing out across the map with a bunch of links, possibly looking for some aggression or some worker play, but mostly I think he's just trying to check out what's going on where the army is. He's trying to take the goal, which is not necessarily a bad idea. He's got a couple of muters out, which is always nice. Muters can uh, fly around and be a pain in the neck, especially if your opponent doesn't have blink. We can now see charge coming out on the field. This could uh, tip the tide for the zealots because this amount of lings and roaches, both fairly close range units, I think... I don't know what the range of the charge is. I think it's about four or five, which is about the same as a roach. So basically roaches... I feel charge lots become a counter to roaches, whereas roaches are the counter to zealots. So I, I, I do like to think of charge lots and zealots as two different entities, but this is a excellent accidental timing attack done by uh, Wisp, because his stalker army is on the other side of the field trying to secure this gold, and he's having a little bit of indecision about what to do. He did manage to secure a reasonable amount of kills, but most importantly the enemy has stopped mining both minerals and gas at his main and as far as I'm concerned if he's not mining you're winning uh, we can now see him pulling back being fairly conservative which is good he just got two three uh, I don't know uh, this mutual uh, one two three so he just got four probe kills four probe kills that's nice a little bit of niggling he stopped his uh, ally from his enemy from being able to take the destructible rocks and thereby the thereby the gold and he is now at a seared, pardon me, he is now at a severe disadvantage for both gas and minerals because all of his workers are over here, he lost some and he's actually not mining gas anywhere at the moment, he's got one, oh yeah, he's starting to put some workers on there now so he's recovered but it, it was slow, and he had to focus on distributing his workers again, which is always a good idea. Shadow Wisp getting a few spine crawlers here and there just to try and leave her some advantage. He's going to be able to snipe this pylon with this group of muters, and well, that's a reasonable amount. That's seven muters. That's quite powerful. Muters are reasonably expensive. We can now see Wins, Evan. Evan wins, pushing out across the map. Uh, I don't know how I like this, because he's just going to have free reign of this base, and to be honest, there's one cannon, big whoop. We can now see that uh, Wisp will be aware of Evans pushing out across the map, but he does have quite a large army of roaches, and these roaches do have level 1 weapons, and these do not. However, if half his army engages while the other half doesn't, this could get messy. Uh, again, excessive force shields, but just as effective as, say, one or two would have been, so no harm done there. And we can now see the muters pulling back across the map to try and reinforce this uh, flailing army of winds. Uh, the, ad 